Gig Gab, episode 399 for Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Our sponsor for this episode is Banzoogle.com, where you can use the promo code GIGGABPOD, and you get 15% off your first year of any subscription. We'll talk more in depth about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. You're in Napomo, California. Kent. How are you today, Mr. Paul Kent? I'm doing pretty darn good, man. How are you doing? Yeah, you know, hanging in there, just rocking and rolling. Made it through another weekend of... Uh, of uh what's the name of the show i'm doing passing strange shows we had a, we had a, 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 a we'll call it a disastrous performance on saturday night but it, it really there were like two mistakes but it, it, like one of them one of the cast members like jumped probably four minutes of dialogues which was fun so that made things interesting all the, of us the the, the trick <laughs> personified right like Everybody has to figure out what that means to them, right? Co- correct. Correct. And then somebody needs to take the lead and like, here we go. Off we go. Yeah. However, today, far more importantly than that, we have a special guest for this, Paul, Mike Schulte from The Pork Tornadoes and from Confused Breakfast, if you know that podcast, drummer extraordinaire, beard wearer, has agreed to join us here for a night. Mike, thank you so much for being a part of the show. You forgot online loudmouth. Uh, you forgot that part. That's where most people know me. Oh, like, gotcha. Oh, that guy, oh, that guy that trolls. And yeah, that, that guy. That guy. The troll. Yeah, all right. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would take issue with that. You are like a self-deprecating dude. You, you, you're way too hard on yourself. So you know, why don't we start? Go ahead. Go ahead, man. No, no, man. No, I, I was just going to go self-deprecating on myself right there. You know, so yeah, we're fine. <laughs> so we know you. And we've been talking to you like, you know, we've been going through this thing where we're having like cool people who have connected to the show in different ways and, you know, encouraged us and commented and shared ideas. But why don't you take a quick second, tell everybody who you are and tell everybody about your band. Yeah, well, well, first of all, thanks to you guys, because uh, when, when I did finally get into the cover band world, I'll tell you the whole story later on. But all I wanted to do was absorb knowledge. And, and no one was doing, no one was like talking about the things I wanted to talk about. And luckily I've stumbled upon you guys and some other really amazing kind of cover band centric sort of podcasts. And, and I just got to tell you, it's, it's one of the best parts of my week is just listening to people talk about the stuff that I want to hear about and that I know about or want to learn about. So thanks for uh, continuing to do this. What? Nine, eight, nine, 10, 15 years later. That Something you guys like been that. Very cool. Yeah. You. yeah. Very cool. <laughs> thanks, you. thanks for saying that, man. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, That's but I, yeah, I, I'm like many other people in the world. I, I, I learned how to play an instrument. I learned how to play drums and I wanted to be the next rock star. And I, I wrote original music. I joined original bands and I toured the country and I'm like, I'm just, we're going to make it. I'm going to be a rock star. And then like many, it never happens. And you go, okay, well, I had a moment where I, I was an adult now. I was out of college and bills were piling up and I had to get a real corporate America job. And so I quit playing music. I said, well, that's a childish thing. So now I'm an adult. You stop doing that. Wow. And I went about two years without playing drums packed up in my basement, just kind of whatever. And, and a, a very special man to me, uh, I met him in corporate America. He said, Hey, I hear you play drums. I go, ah, that's, that's the old me. That was the kid. I don't do that anymore. He's like, well, how would you like to join a band with me? And we'll play out a little bit. We'll just have some fun. I said, Oh, that actually sounds kind of funny. He goes, it's a cover band. I go, nope, nope, not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, because if you grew up in the original band world, you're like, cover bands. Oh, my God. We yeah. talked about this very thing. Yeah. Dude, and I was so anti it. But then he's like, hey, man, we'll make $100 a piece. <laughs> I was like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're going to get make money doing this? And so this was 2008. Okay. I joined a band with this guy and I just reinvigorated my love for playing and performing. And it, and it was cool to take, this was pre pork tornadoes, by the way, but it was cool to take those sensibilities that I had from the DIY do it yourself, original band, indie band world, and then apply that to a world that I was now getting into this cover band world going, no one's doing anything. They're all just like, 
oh yeah, we learned, we learned four hours of music and uh, we just stand on stage and play it. And I'm like, but, but why don't, don't you want to get more people and bigger? No, 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 we don't. we just play dude. And so I'm sitting here going, well, wait a minute. Can I, can I find the right group of musicians and actually go like, like pave trails, like, like make it do things that no one ever thought a cover band would do in Iowa. And so sure enough, I, I met the fellows in the pork tornadoes. I actually weaseled my way into the band. They were like the perfect band. I go, Oh, I got to get in that band. And luckily the drummer, uh, he took a touring gig with uh, Hamilton Loomis, a blues guitar player. He, he incredible drummer. He, yeah. he took off. Like, hey guys, I know every bit of your songs. Let me in. And, and <laughs> so there, you just, you really just weaseled your way right into that band. Weaseled my way into the band. And then I did the important things, right? I, I bought the trailer. I, t- I had the social media passwords. <laughs> I, I, I did the things that made me irreplaceable because listen, I am nowhere near the best drummer in the world. I am like slightly below probably average and I'm okay admitting that. But my other skills is where I'm like, okay, I got other skills. I know social media. I know video editing. I have enough money to buy a trailer and a truck to pull our gear. Let me in the band. So yeah, that was, uh, geez, it, probably it, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, something like it's that. It's interesting. Yeah. We've, we've talked about this probably more offline than on during the show, but it, like you're someone, you obviously have a great deal of self-awareness. You're also a better drummer than you let on. I've, I've watched some of your stuff. However, like there is what you just described in many cover bands. I don't want to say all, I might say most, but certainly in many, there is one person who is not as good a musician as everyone else, but they bring some like vital intangible. skill. Yeah. Well, it's not even intangible. It's very tangible. Yeah. Usually it's yeah. oftentimes not it's musical. It's not something. musical. Yeah. Right. Yes. But it a lot of times it's the, you know, the the booking. You know, the, the or the trailer or the PA or like something yeah. that is vital to the band. And when you're a kid, you think, oh, man, we got to get rid of that guy. He can't play as well as we can. And then you realize, but we don't play without him. So it does it matter, you know, and and um, and then you realize, yeah. OK, well, that that's fine. As long as as long as the person's aware of of that role that they play, then it, it can it can actually work out spectacularly. So, but also yeah. something that Mike just shared, <clears throat> I think it's the first time we've actually heard that. You know this this difference between the original music world and the cover band music world. I don't think we've ever had anybody articulate that there is the skill set you develop in the original world that is a survival base that can be applied to cover bands. In a very nobody's ever said that on this show. I don't think Dave. Yeah. You recall? No, I, it's interesting. I've been wanting to have my friend John McCormick on who is the guitar player in Bitter Pill, but he also has a bunch of other projects that he's in, including some cover projects. And he has said those same things to me uh, about how he approaches the cover because he came, he and I were in the original band world sort of separately, but together. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but that's a whole other conversation. That's that's a future guest. And, but, where, and uh, where I was doing that, I, was, I mean, that was 90, 95 to like 2005. And that was that era of like, online was coming about MySpace was coming about and the uh it's called uh i don't know if i can can i swear on this you can do whatever you want no, I, all no, i have to do no, is no, flip no, the no, switch no, no. you can believe this out there's a there was a website called book your own fucking life.com and it, and it was like all tour contacts and venue contacts and and like we just we just dove in we're like this is so great like we can do it ourselves and so with the pork tornadoes no one was doing that and i was like well why can't we just create our own events why can't we do our own thing and like develop our own crowd and, and do the same thing we did in the original band world, build a crowd, build a foundation, take it places, make events out of it, do to do tours. Like, and no one seemed to, I mean, maybe it's different. This is Iowa. I was always about 10 years behind everything else in the world. But as I was coming up in that cover band world, no one was doing it. And they looked at me like I was just insane for the stuff that I was, I was proposing and doing with the band. And they're like, that'll never work. And then, you know, we just, we just had faith in it and we knew we had a good product and we just pushed it. And that's, that's what I wanted. I was rejuvenated to play music again. I was like, this is so great. Can I finally achieve that rock star status that 14 year old me wanted when he learned how to play the drums? And yeah. And so, so I went for it. Are you the one I, and I'm curious, actually, who does the bookings 
yeah. for pork tornadoes. Now, were you doing them for a time, and then did you get management? Like, like how how th- describe where you are, but also how you yeah. got here. Yeah. So, so with, with the current lineup that the pork tornadoes is, it's been through some some member movements, but the singer and the bass player have always been there. I've been there third longest. Uh, we found some weird kind of. <sighs> It was all by accident, right? We we sure. just had the right people because you guys know that finding the right people to play music with is one of the hardest things you will ever do in your life. And somehow we stumbled upon like these people that are truly great friends, truly love being together. That all are not only good at what they do, but also possess skills outside of music, right? So we yes. somehow we somehow stumbled upon this lineup of where like I'm like, hey guys. I love marketing and social media and video editing. Let Give me the keys to that. You guys don't even do it. I do it. You don't even ask me questions. I'm all about it. And they go, okay. And then Corey, uh, Corey was our booking agent for a very, very long time. That is his skill set. His dad is an attorney. He is, I, if you came to me and I said, ah, we're, we need 10 grand for that show. And you go, how about five? I go, oh, that's fine. You know, that's not Corey. Corey does not do that. So he's perfect for the booking world which we now have an agency that does that, but sure. he still is that middleman. He, he's the contact. He's the conduit guy. there. Yep. And yep. you've got Jerry on keys who is, he's our advanced guy, right? He's our, he's our, he's our show up to the show. He's the guy that talks to the venue that makes sure our, our writers fulfilled, that makes sure the people were supposed to be there. He deals with our roadies, makes sure they know what they need to do. He, he builds this Google calendar at, for every show that says, it's a timeline of what happens all day long, when you should leave your house, when you should arrive, when our first set is. And he, he does all of that. And then Mason is our guy. He's our singer. He's sort of the one that goes, Hey, I got an idea. What about this song? But if we did this and oh, and by the way, here's a recording I have of this song. Like, do you think do you, and so he's kind of the song arranger and none of us touch each other's thing. We say, we fully trust you. You do it. And I don't know if we could ever have accomplished that. If you took us back in time, oh man, and said, Try it again, so I don't rare. Think, I don't think it would have ever worked because it's not it's not a sustainable model if you don't have the right people. It does right, not right, work. Right. Right. Well, I mean, that's why you're business partners, right? I mean, like this kind of thing. What you just described is more like a, a startup that gets it right, and many startups right, right. don't, right? But but what you just described is like, oh yeah, this is that. That, you know, magical partnership. We all grew together. And that, went, yeah. Hey. <laughs> and, and and it's like, oh, we all do. We all have complementary skills. We all do different things. And the the end product is, a, is you know, greater than the sum of its parts kind of thing. Oh. It's rare that people even think about that with oh. a band, let alone wind up with the skills that actually makes that work. So, yeah. yeah. All right. I got to do something with you, Mike. Ready? Go. We're going to do a little rapid fire here. Oh, boy. All right. <clears throat> Real quick. Name of the band. The Pork Tornadoes. Where did the, the name come from? Uh, the, back before I was in the band, they were coming up with a terrible... Uh, they, they would change their name every show. Turns out that's a bad business model. They would come up with more, <laughs> I kind of like that idea. Show. Yeah, Swallowers of Planets. Um, they Just tons of terrible names. They said, whatever our next bad name that we come up with is going to be our full name. Uh, a tornado had hit a pig farm as it does in Iowa and the wacky FM DJ as said it, it was a pork tornado. And they said, Oh, that's our name. We're the pork tornadoes. Probably Boom. we did will you, be a band for six more months. Did you All ever, right. were you aware? Did, did Well, was the name, was the oh. band named before or after John Fishman's pork tornado oh, project? Interesting story. It was named after, but nobody in the band uh, was aware of that. And when I, the first time I met the Pork Tornadoes, I was in another cover band that opened up for the Pork Tornadoes. And I looked them up online and I saw Pork Tornado, John Fishman. And I'm like, oh God, we're opening for yeah. John Fishman. This is crazy. And I show up and I'm like, what the hell is this? Isn't John Fishman? <laughs> and so, and they had no clue. And we still get probably once a month, a yeah. very, very angry fish head showing up on our YouTube going, this is bullshit. You should not <laughs> think this name. Uh, very angry. So, Dave, if you could talk to us a few of them and just let them know that we're good guys and we're not playing the same kind of stuff. All just right. let them know. I don't, I don't know <laughs> Fishman, right, but, but he's actually somebody we've talked about having on the show. So that like, would be he's, he's a reachable guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah <laughs> Number yeah. of guys in the band. Currently four members in the band. Been that way for a while. Uh, number of shows a year. Uh, 50, 55, call it 55. Wow. Biggest show you've played ever. Yeah. 
Uh, we played in front of 20,000 people at a, uh, at a festival in Cedar Rapids. That's a lot. How, was, how about for an, a, a ticketed event of your own? What's the largest yep. draw you've had for that? Uh, the most people we ever had for a ticketed event was right before COVID, late 2019. We had 3,500 people come into a, a baseball park. We we were at a, a stage on the diamond. Yep. And, and everybody there was uh, tickets on the floor and then tickets in the stadium. We had we had we had 3,500 coming in. That's <laughs> a lot. Okay, so I I know you've sort of glossed over the well we just promote it like you, somebody might an original band and we have a great team that we're super lucky to have and blah 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 yada yada 3500 people so <laughs> let's talk about yada yada right like okay. th- like how, what what really is the formula and i realize the formula is figure out the formula and then just repeat 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 and grind it out but what are you, you know, grinding out i've thought about this for a long time if you if you took me back in time with full knowledge of what I know, everything I know right now, I, I own. And I'm, I'm going back 15 years in time. And, sure. and it was like, hey, hey, take the pork tornadoes to where they are now. I don't think we would do it because I think somewhere along the line, something happened that that built some sort of legendary status. And I don't know what it is. It could have been a lot of things, but we we got very lucky in the fact that we have some incredible musicianship and you're talking about your episode two weeks ago, Adam Moskowitz, what a, what a heck of an interview, heck of a guy. Yep. But like, if you could, if you could say he's there, we are the complete opposite spectrum of where Adam is. You right, know, like, right. Right. It's complete utter opposite because we can't, we just actually canceled our second show ever last weekend because our singer's wife went into labor early. And, and we, we are a full blown cancel. If, if one of our members is gone, we are out. And yep. we sort of built this brand around the members in the band and, and, and who they are and what they do. And we built this, this, uh, party atmosphere, this come as you are safe place. We're going to, we're going to play your favorite songs. You're going to have the time of your life. You're going to have tons of drinks and you're going to have a great time. And you're going to hear something you've never heard before. And we've kind of preached that for 15 years, just like it's, it's the party that you never knew you wanted, you know, and, and the people that come never, never miss it. And the people that have missed it are like, well, I got to go to see what this is all about. And we got them, you know? So I don't know if you could do it again. I don't know. Nowadays is such a, it's a shtick thing. It's a, it's a tribute band thing. It's, you got to have something to get your foot in the door and we have nothing. We just well, have, well, but what it, name, let's dissect you know? this because there is clearly there is I, I won't use the term shtick, but, but I kind of want to find, I want to figure out what your shtick is. I want to figure out what, what is it that brings new people to the, to the shows? I, I know once you, I like, there's two parts of this, right? And, and again, this is like any business there's, you know, customer acquisition and then there's customer retention, right? Right. <laughs> right? I mean, like that's, that's what's going yeah. on here. So the retention thing I get. Like you guys put on a great show, but it, but it's not just the music. It's not just the performance. It's, you know, the staging and every, the, the whole experience. And part of that experience is the other fans that these people are going to encounter while they're the there. Fans are going to be there. So you better go. You, you know, better go. Kind of, right. Like this is, yeah. this is a good vibe all the on stage and off. Like you, you throw the party, you set the tone, but it's their show. Right. Like I, I get that. So the retention part and we should probably dig into some of that too, but like, what's the customer acquisition part of this? Like what, what is no. it? How do you promote it? Is it your, it, like, do you think YouTube is a, a no small part of it? If, if you go back in time, if you go back 13 years ago, when I joined the band, we had a lead guitar player, not a, not Jerry on keys. He was not there. And this guy shredded. Right. And we played a lot of, you can find some of the old songs. Uh, we did like, I got a woman, the, the kind of the John oh, Mayer yeah. trio version and we did all these like rock and roll songs some b-side kings of leon stuff that just these college kids just had to fall in love with because we just kept playing them every night you know and all of a sudden there was a moment we played teenage dream by Katy perry (laughs) like this rock this rock and roll version and and this weird legend was born of like oh they play girl songs but they're rock and roll kind of a thing i and we didn't intend to do it and that I feel like that was the first moment. The second moment was our singer uh, actually was on The Voice. Um, 2014, 
he got picked out of, of YouTube. He didn't even go audition. They said, come, come to Chicago tomorrow. You're going to go straight to the front of the line, see what you're at. And he was one of a hundred finalists to actually go to LA. He was there for two months, rehearsed with the band, got in front of the judges. He was not picked. They did not turn his chair around, but that advertising of like, he might be, he might get turned around. That was another like, boom, in kind of legendary yep. status. And then we put out that Tennessee whiskey video that every band in the world covers Tennessee whiskey. And it's probably the most covered video song on YouTube. And somehow our version that we had just learned and weren't even sure of what it was, we just kind of put it out and made a video. And I'm like, I'm the video guy. And I wasn't even happy with that video. I'm like, whatever, we'll just put it out. And it, and it's at 12 million views or whatever. Right. And so there, there are these moments that we just kept, I, if a young band comes to me, I say never get complacent because there's been these moments where we've we've played in front of a thousand people, been like, if you would have told me two years ago we played in front of a thousand people, that's it. I've I've hit the pinnacle. But every time we do it, we go, well, we need let's go more. Let's we got to get fifteen hundred next time, and we gotta we gotta do more people. We gotta play this new town. And I've never gotten complacent about where we're at, and I think that's what it's been. We just keep pushing, 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 pushing until whatever. All right, look, we all know that the show must go on. And with our sponsor, Banzoogle, you can always be performing online, too. Banzoogle offers an easy and fast way to build a stunning website and online store for your music. Picture this. In just a matter of minutes, you'll have a site that's as captivating as your tunes. With Banzoogle, you get access to dozens of fully customizable templates so that your online presence can be as unique as your sound. And here's a sweet note. They provide tools that allow you to sell your music, your merch, and your tickets all commission-free. That means more money in your pocket after every sale. Want to grow your fan base? Well, Banzoogle's got you covered with their fantastic mailing list tools. You can send newsletters, share updates, and keep your fans engaged and excited about your musical journey. But wait, there's more. Banzoogle also seamlessly integrates with Bandcamp, SoundCloud, YouTube, Bands in Town, and more, making it easier for you to share content from your various online profiles. And if you ever feel stuck, their live musician-friendly support team is available seven days a week to help you hit the right note with your website. Plans start at just $8.29 a month, including hosting and your own free custom domain name. And because you are a listener here of Gig Gab, you get a special treat. Head over to Banzoogle.com to try it free for 30 days and use the promo code GIGGABPOD to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. That's Banzoogle.com, promo code GIGGABPOD, G-I-G-G-A-B-P-O-D, and... uh our thanks to the folks at Banzoogle for sponsoring this episode. All right. So I, I think the formula it really is capitalize on everything that happens to you and, and never take it for granted, right? Like you, you might have one lucky break, but that's all you need. I, like, and then, and then another one will happen if you stick with it long enough. I, I, I it seems like, seems like that's your formula anyway. And I don't like the term fake it till you make it, uh, but but it is that thing of presenting a it, branding so important in our world. And and if you aren't if you aren't making that brand for yourself, you're just you're just a, you're you're in your you're a cover band. You know, you're just yeah. your said cover band that they can insert anywhere. And yeah, no you're replaceable. Play, play it, it, the same set list as everyone else, right? Yep. But if you can if you can sort of have this bigger than think about like eighties rock and roll and seventies and those bands that were bigger, larger than life. Like you just heard stories about them and you're like, Oh, I, we gotta, I feel like that's kind of what we built. And I, and I don't, I don't want to sound like can they all look, we've built this. Like a lot of it's been accident what we've done. Well, but, I mean, it, what did, yeah. what did Steve jobs say? Uh, it's, it's, it, you can only connect the dots going backwards, right? Everything are just, it's just a series of accidents and, but you look back and you're like, Oh, look at this. It all just makes perfect sense. No, it is, this works. Okay. I let's, I want to shift into the nuts and the bolts of things a little bit. So there's a lot of folks out there that have never played for a thousand people, let alone 20,000 or 3,500 walk us through a typical gig day for you now? Like what's the average crowd or even what's the minimum crowd size that you generally play for 
to start. Yeah, we're, and then, yeah. We're, we're moving, you know, we're coming out of summer season in Iowa and yeah. I know things are different everywhere, but summer season in Iowa is town festival season. It okay. is, it is whatever days, whatever days, town days, festival day. Every town has their own little festival. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and that is just anywhere from a thousand to 5,000 people okay. every time, every single time. And, and showing up, it's, it's pretty typical stuff, right? We travel with a, uh, we, we don't own any sound equipment. We don't own any lights. We are just a band with gear. And, uh, so we have a trusted sound company, which is so important. If you don't, if you don't run it yourself, you gotta have somebody that, you know, yeah. especially if you're on in-ears, you know, you hand them the whip and you go do it, do what you do. And you don't have to worry about it. So our sound company shows up with anything from a like a ground stack turbo sound if it's very yeah. small to a full-blown macaulay line array with led walls and everything it just it's a package deal depending on what the town wants and we show up uh, with band gear we actually have roadies we have uh, three people that work for us that unload our trailer set up our stuff uh we what we go have a little we we don't live in the same town so we t typically have a band meeting every show where we just get to go sit backstage catch up on stuff, talk about some new songs that we're doing. And we walk on stage sound check. And then, uh, and we, we only play about a two hour, two hour, 15 minute set right now. That's kind of what we've got worked yep. into the schedule and then walk off stage, roadies, tear everything down, head to the hotel and, and head back to our families in the morning. All right. Wait, awesome. I have a ton of questions. That's get awesome. A, get back up to that place. Right. Uh, let's go backwards first. How long have you had making enough money to employ roadies? Uh, you know what? That was probably, it was right before COVID. <clears throat> it was probably yeah, early 2019, early 2018. We sort of hit that next level where, we're, we're, you know, we're getting older and we're like, we've got families. I just had my, my first daughter. She's uh, almost a year and a half now. Our singer just had his second child. We time at home is precious and being able to get home and not be that guy that just lifted all of his stuff and loaded a trailer at yeah. three in the morning. So we said it, it was money well spent for us to just, continue the professionalism of not only having people do stuff for us, but also bringing guitars out for changes and changing guitar strings and fixing problems so that the show is like, we're going and just like a national act, you know? Yep. And, um, wait, so many questions. That, well, um, think, think about your next question. I just want to shine a light on what you just said again, you know, taking a lesson from business. It's great. When you start making some money, the, the, the temptation is to just put it in your pocket because you've either made nothing for a long time or you've made, you know, bare minimum. And you're just like, well, I deserve this spending the money back in the business, reinvesting in the business. And for you, that meant roadies that like you know it, how quick you can get burnout on this, man. If yes. If you, well, if and you it's not protect yourself from that. Yeah. It's not even the burnout. It's like, look, there's jobs to be done. You can't do everything if you want to do it all. Well, and, you know, one of the lessons we learned from the other show that I do, we interviewed somebody on uh, business brain is they said, look, you know, I'm a control freak. So, uh, I, I went a long time not being able to hire anyone because there was nobody I trusted to do the job as well as me. And, that and, is the hard part. <laughs> and his advice was find somebody that can do it 80% as well as you. Yes. And that's good enough. And then you got to let go. So this is like, it's really smart what you guys did. Again, capitalizing, you started making a little bit of money instead of just saying, great, we made a little, we made more money this gig and put it in your pockets. You thought, wait, we want to keep doing this. We want this level to be sustainable. How is it sustainable? We need more people on the gigs. Like super smart. Yeah. And that is a question. Sorry, Paul, I'll get to you right in a second. But uh, that is a thing where when we do these big shows, uh, 3,500 people coming into a ballpark, we we are our cause. We just had an amphitheater show in our in our my hometown, Cedar Rapids. Our the minute we announced the show, we were 40, 40 grand in the hole. That was that was how much money we were in the hole for what it would cost to put on that show and how large scale that is. Yeah, that is a daunting daunting position to be in. But we know that if we don't go bigger every time and bigger wall and. Ah, then, then, then we've, 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 pit, we've peaked mm -hmm. and I never want to peak. I never want to peak. So we take those large chances and we know the money's coming in and we know it's great, but we gotta, we gotta reinvest it. We, we gotta buy new gear. We've got to hire people. We've got to pay our sound guy what he's worth and yes. all the gear that he had. He spent a hundred K like a month ago on, on some new lights. We're like, well, okay, we need to, we need to up your salary yeah. just a little bit there, you know? <laughs> no, that, like again, another light to shine. If you want to do gigs like this, 
when you sign the contract on the venue, you're now 40 grand or more in the hole. Yeah. And, and now you, you just got to move forward. You got to trust that you're going to make it. And I will tell you, people say that deadlines are excellent motivators. Debt <laughs> is an, is an even more excellent motivator. <laughs> like <laughs> debt, debt and a finish line of a gig date and debt. is Yes. Is a, a right. This motivator. is expiring inventory. You don't have an unlimited amount of time to figure out how to not lose 40 grand. That's right. That is why, that is why we hired a publicist and we now spend a lot of money on Facebook ad advertising okay. because we're like, we, we got to go. We got, we got to push this, especially after COVID. I know you guys know all about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, do, do any of the guys have day jobs still? We okay. So in 2019, when all that, when that, that we hit that next level, we're like, dude, we've got all these gig inquiries coming in. We can go. We can double our shows, quit our day jobs, move on full time with this. And we had a very, very serious conversation about it. And then COVID hit, and uh, and we all kind of went, oh, oh my god, I can't believe. Our, our keyboard player, Jerry, is a full-time musician. That is what he does. He's been doing it for a decade, and he will always do that. Our singer is a mechanical engineer for John Deere. I, I run a podcast called The Confused Breakfast. I sell real estate. Our uh, bass player is a high up at a grocery store. Like we, We've reached a point in life where we will never go past 50, 60 gigs a year, and, and that is how it is. We're not, we're not leaving our jobs at this point because there, there is an end date to this. I mean, it, it has to happen. You know? sure. I mean, it's not going to go on forever. Yeah, well, and we got to get back to that because that's a really interesting question. So, those fifty-five gigs a year, how many are self-produced ticketed shows? Oh man, and and that's another thing about Iowa. So we we are all over the place, right? We've probably got like five dates that are full-blown Pork Tornadoes productions. Like we we go, you give us the venue, we'll take care of it. Then there's probably let's call it ten to. 10 to 15 uh, club dates where, where we're in the, we're in it with the club. We're, we're there to get, we were just in Omaha at a great club. Like that is, we're in it together. Right. Then there's the, then there's the town festival shows that they, they pay us a price. We show up, you know, like they're usually free, no big deal, no advertising necessary. We show up, we play. And then it's the private corporate era where, to call that uh, maybe 20 gigs a year. We're playing either weddings or, or corporate events, or uh, we usually do about two to three fly out dates a year where somebody's sending us to Orlando or LA and that kind of stuff, which is, which is really the bread and butter that becoming a part of a, uh, a booking, a very good booking agent, uh, an agency. That is where that stuff starts to come into play for sure. Got it. So uh, how about um, you guys have blazed a trail. Is there a whole tier of cover bands that you you know that are that are trying to do what you do and they can't quite get the either the serendipity or the good fortune or whatever reason? But I mean, are there other bands getting the same type of draw as you? Those types of things, or you know, is there really a clear differentiation? Nobody's nobody's quite there yet in our in our area. There are a lot of bands, especially you get into like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Chicago. There are a lot of very very talented bands that operate on a very budget friendly uh, manner. Like we we have been pushing the envelope of of what we think bands are worth. Iowa bands were not making money. And Midwest bands were going, ah, yeah, we'll play this full festival for three grand. And you're like, three grand? What are you doing? You know, you're a you're a 10 piece band. Like, what is happening here? You know, so we've been we've been very forefront in pushing that envelope. Uh, you know, Fork Tornadoes LLC uh, cleared half a mil last year. You know, now granted, now granted. A yeah, lot. yeah, that's gross, gross <laughs> revenues, not net profits. Right. Yeah, yes, that's, yes. A lot, that's a lot of gross revenues for a cover yes. band. Come on. And, and we pushed it and we're very adamant about it. And a lot of bands there, there's probably maybe three or four Iowa bands that have started to fall in behind and say, ah, I see what you're doing. Let's, let's give me advice. And I'm the guy that gives advice. If you slide in my DMS and you want to know, I will tell you, but I, I find that a lot of musicians hear what I have to say and they go, yeah, I, I don't know. That's too much. Like that seems like too much work. It's a lot of work. Hoping, yeah. I was hoping there was a magic pill for this, but Listen, but, overnight success takes 20 years on average. And that is the thing. A lot of people look at us and they're like, oh, where did they come from? They blew up. We've been play we've been a band for 15 years. This this plan has been in place for 10 years of what we're doing now. We've just been like plowing through the snow to open the doors for everybody else. And I I do feel like if there is a legacy of us 
you look back on the pork tornadoes in Iowa 20 years, I feel like our legacy is that we did open the door for, for the power and the specialness of a good cover band to, to play town festivals and to, to bring joy to people and that they deserve to be paid a really good amount because they're professionals and they're so good at what they do. And so I do feel like that's something that we have helped push, you know, and I hope I am fascinated by what you're saying here, Mike. And I'll tell you, so we're going to, we're going to dive into this a little bit here. So I I have, I have one thing I want to, I just, I I want to make this a two parter guys. Let's go. I want to show Well, we're definitely going to have you back. There's no question about this. We knew that before you showed up though, but that's, that's a whole different story. Um, 500 K 55 shows a year. So that's just shy of 10 grand on average, 10 grand a show. When you say to people, go book your band and, and earn the money you should be earning. (laughs) Everybody at home, do the math. Like that's the number. And I realize you've got shows that pay you less than that. And some that pay you way more and it averages out, but that's the average is nine to 10 K. Right. So yeah, yeah and that's what we shoot for and we try to get higher and higher every year yeah. because we do feel there are those places where you this is how you know you're doing something right and again i'm i sound i i hate the way i sound when i listen back on conversations like this because i'm so passionate about it and i sound like a conceited jerk but i'm so happy that finally you can get a small town festival in iowa to to, to go to part ways with the band they've that classic rock band that they've had for 30 years yeah. and the, the young kids don't show up anymore they, it's just this small town that is dying a slow death and they finally decide to say hey let's let's take the 500 bucks we pay that classic rock band let's 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 bring an led wall let's bring this band called the pork tornadoes and let's see what happens and every time someone does that the young kids show up and the town revitalizes itself sort of. And I, I take such great pleasure in that because I think it's time. It's time for these town festivals to start switching over yeah. and young blood. And, and, and yeah, I just, I just love that so much. Like, uh, again, I, it is a finite thing. I, I don't know. We're not going to do this forever, but that is where I take pure joy is, is showing up in a town of a thousand people and, and putting on a show where they're like, those are the greatest thing that's ever happened to our town. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. Right. Yeah, it, you know, it, it really is. Yeah. Oh, great. All right. So Mike, you have kind of blown my mind here. And <laughs> so you threw a number out for a festival gig. I probably right? should have done that. Well, I won't repeat the number, but I'll say that that number <laughs> is, is, you know, what would be considered pretty good play. And I, and I work in a, in a pretty affluent area. Oh yeah. And we've pushed in our band, we've pushed ask and we have a very, very good draw, but I definitely know that there's a ceiling yep. and, and 500 bands that'll play for half of that. I know. And so, so I just, I just want you to share what some of those early conversations were, where you, when your ask became astronomical in the eyes of a local festival, how you yeah. actually sold that. Well, and first of all, Paul, like I love listening to your stories about that because you guys are doing you're doing that that taking matters into your own hand thing, the Halloween gig. You're, what do you what did you say you're charging like sixty nine dollars a take? I'm like, oh, I'm like, wait, what did you say? You know, that's that's astronomical. So you are doing the right things, but you have to be prepared to not get the gig, right? You know, some town festivals are just going to be like, that's too much. I cannot do that. And that's fine. But you also have to be able to back it up. You have to have from day one, I've been accumulating testimonials. I have a list of what do you, Oh, you're a town festival. Well, here, here's a hundred different town festival people that said, I can't believe it was the, we sold the most beer we've ever sold. Oh, you're a venue. Well, here's some venue testimonials. So, it's really hard at first. You can't just shoot yourself up there. You have to do that gradual game. You know, a lot of times it's the foot in the door, right? It's the play at first. And then they go, Oh my God, let's do it again next year. And you go, okay, well we will definitely do it again next year, but things have changed a little bit. We get, we got to raise our price up. And, and a lot of times they don't care, you know, cause they, especially, I don't know if it, if it is the way you guys are, but, but it's, it's all about alcohol sales, right? It's all about generating. That's it. That kind of revenue and if you don't if you're not able to push that you could be the best band in the world but if you bring 15 year old boys to the show and that and that's your audience like they they can't sell booze to them no yes yeah and so so if you're not encouraging that if you're not saying that from stage if you're not uh 
partaking yourself on stage, which we did quite a bit and maybe to a detriment for a while there. We've, we've toned back a lot on stage, but, uh, no, but making that part of that, like embracing the fact that that is literally what you are there for. I, I've, I've absolutely noticed that with the different bands I play in the bands that embrace the idea that we are at a place that is selling primarily selling alcohol. That is their nut, right? So when you embrace it, you make more money. It's just it, how it goes. This is where I have a problem with the the mindset of the mass mindset of cover bands. And I know I get in trouble that that meme that everyone shares of the pile of money of pretending like a bar made a pile of money. And I, well, we need to pay the cover band. It's like, I, I hate that mentality because why can't you work together? Like, why can't you and the bar be a, be a pack together? It's like, we're going to, we're going to sell you so much alcohol that you're going to want us back in a month and you're going to double our pay. Cause you don't even care. You know, like, why is that not a, why is that not a thought out of the gate of a band instead of being that, that mentality of we're the entertainment you hired us. So we're going to play and that's what you hired us for. You know, like I don't, I don't understand that mentality of like, why not? Why not? Like build a crowd Parker. that comes yeah. and hangs out with you and the venue's supposed to do the advertising. How about we both do it? Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you know, it's that, it's that, yeah. I think where that comes from it, it well, certainly from my standpoint, where it comes from is the venue that says, We're not gonna do anything. You just fine. show up and it's like, okay, well, if we're gonna do that, then <laughs> I wanna define the night. Like I'm okay yes. with it, but now everything's up to me. And yes. and usually they're like, no, no, here's how we do it. And it's like, ah, <laughs> so now we're partners, I see. Ah. Like, ah, okay. Well, let's act like partners in every way on this. And and usually then, you know, it, it, then you have a little more, yeah. a more honest conversation. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's fascinating, man. Oh, and you got to take it into your own hands. You know, like I was, I was talking to a guy the other day about, they're like, well, what do you do to advertise a show? And I'm like, what don't what don't you do there's it, we're in the era of you cannot trust you cannot trust one avenue at all to be the way that you advertise shows you almost have to have 10 different streams of reaching people because we all know social media used to be this golden Facebook used to be this thing. It was basically our website. It's like, Oh, yeah. this is so great. We have all these people and they're going to know they don't anymore. And so we, we utilize social media. We're one to two times a day on Facebook, a couple of times a week on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, but it can't stop at that. It's got to then be, well, let's spend some money on some background ads. It can't be boosting posts. It has to be behind the scenes ads. So like Facebook, if you want to talk crap about Facebook, it's it's fine because we all do, and I sure, hate sure. it. But but their background ads manager and how they can reach people is an incredible tool. So we they've gotten in some free. trouble for that. It's it's so incredible that <laughs> it's, it's it's unreal. So we spend money on that, and we and we and we go into that. Then we just hired a publicist who goes that she takes a certain amount of show and she goes out and finds us radio interviews and newspaper. We've got our email list. We actually just started doing last year. I haven't shared this yet because I've been accumulating data and I'm not fully ready to do it yet, but we bought a, a photo booth, uh, one of those ring light photo yeah, booths. Yeah. Spent like six grand on it. We put it up at every show where people come and take their photos and put their, their cell phone number in it. And then after the show, I have a database of 300 people from this town that was at our show. And so now we've, we have a text, we're texting people and not only emailing, we're, we're doing the text list of, Hey, by the way, we're going to be back in your town. Remember when you saw us, here's the ticket link kind of thing. So, and none of it, none of it's a telltale, like this is the one that gets us the most ticket sales. It's just do all of them. You have to do it all. And we do that for not even ticketed events. We do, we say, because guess what? If you played town festival that was free last year, and you brought 5,000 people, but then this year you didn't advertise it and no one knew you were there. And now there's a thousand people there. You're not coming back next year. So unfortunately you still have to advertise those shows and put out good content that the cold audience sees and goes, Oh, that band, I, I might check them out. That seems kind of cool. You know? So I'm still looking, someone out there probably knows another method. I didn't mention there of how they advertise. And I want to know, like, tell me feedback uh, you, at giggabpodcast.com folks, feedback at giggabpodcast. We'll share it with Mike and everybody else. Share yeah. it with me. Tell me what your other method is. Cause I gotta know. Yeah. So those five ticketed shows you do, <clears throat> are they spread out all around Iowa? Yeah, we usually do our, our big 
probably Cedar Rapids, which is where I live. We do twice a year there. Those are Pork Tornadoes Productions, true and true. Then our second biggest market is probably Des Moines. We do uh, one really big summer one there. And then we're, we're expanding a little bit. We're finding those small towns that maybe we played the town festival in a couple of years. Can we now bring our own, our big mobile stage, our, our thing? Can we do our own thing? So we're, and, and you know, if for anybody out there that is selling tickets, I, COVID changed a lot of things. I, it's so hard. I'm, Paul, you're probably figuring this out that everybody that would have bought tickets ahead of time in 2019 now just kind of waits till the last minute uh, in 2023. So, yeah, I, you know, it, it's a weird, I, we were, we were in the negative going into our giant Cedar Rapid show about a week into it. We were in the negative just going, this has never happened. Are we, are we, is this it? Are we done? And, and, you know, sure enough that week, 750 tickets sold, you know, and it's wow. Like, why are we, why are you, waiting? why do we have to sweat this? That's right. Oh, no, why are you doing this? So uh, I, you I know. think this well, the you know, scarcity thing is really, a, it, it's a, it's a thing, right? So yeah. I'll just share to us. We do certain offers that are limited. So like, you know, for our table, we'll do like tables or VIP tables, but they're very finite. Now, one thing I don't want to do, I said, I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to threaten people into buying things. So I don't, oh, five, five things left or three. Like, I just think that's not a great way to talk to your customer, but <laughs> we will release, you know, X amount to um, our tried and true databases and let that build and give us a great foundation to, you know, then layer the future sales on, right? Yes. We kind of know early on that we're in a pretty good place. And then we can start to claim some scarcity. And again, I don't want to do it by threatening anybody and saying, hey, don't miss out or, you know, this type of thing. But but it's true. I mean, you know, if if I only had one table and I only sold one table, they're sold out, right? So, well, you know, well, that's kind of... Yeah, no, sorry. You talk about scarcity. That was one of the things that did, if you go back eight, eight years in, in the life of the Pork Tornadoes, is once you capture a market, don't go back for six months. Like, you know, right. uh, once once for you've sure. got them, you, you have to make it so that they will that whatever night you're playing, they have to go because that's the first time you've been there in X amount of time. And I know it's hard. I, there's so many markets where you're just in this town and you just play every weekend in a, in a 20 mile radius. And I know it's hard to, hard to do that. But in Iowa, man, we're in about a six hour. Well, this is, this is why yeah, yeah. it's, you know, working original bands tour, they don't yeah. want to live in hotels. But they have to like, like really, you know, that, that talk to any, uh, you know, original band that's been like on the touring circuit for 15 years and say, hey, I have this idea. What if you could do a residency in one place and have all your fans come to you and, like and they would bed every night? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah please, please. <laughs> and they would be like, absolutely. But that's insane. Like, you don't get to do that yeah, until it, you've been doing it for decades. And yeah. even then, maybe not. But Another thought about scarcity to, that I'll share with with everybody here, because in addition to playing a bunch of music, I go see a bunch of music. I won't buy tickets for GA events unless I think it's going to sell out. Right. I'll, otherwise, I'll just buy like the, the week of maybe the day of depending. So but events that, <sighs> that have reserved seats or even reserved sections, that's a good way to get those people to not buy the week of the event. You're right. Yeah. It, times are just a little different. People used to say, well, we're going to that. And now they're like, well, we might go to that. We might. And, <laughs> and people have learned well, because so many shows, and I think it, I think COVID is sort of the, a driver of this because so many things got canceled and so many things, especially concerts wound up giving uh, power back to the buyer, right? It yeah. used to be that you just had to buy the ticket and you either ate it or not. And then it was like, well, I can get this refunded. And then that stopped, right? Yep. For a little while, you you had all kinds of flexibility because they were like, just please buy the ticket. We hope you'll eventually actually come. <laughs> if you're sick, that's fine. We'll give you your money back. <laughs> it, you know, if you don't want to come, yeah. we'll just give you your money back. But now that's over and people are like, well, I liked it better when because there were a couple <laughs> times where I wanted to go, but then I had a work thing or whatever, yeah. and I didn't want to eat the ticket. And so I got my money back. And so I think GA shows are now yep. sort of suffering from from that, sure. unless it's going to sell out. I, I screwed up with Bowling for Soup. We, we went with the family recently, 
And I didn't know if my kids could go because they don't like one of them lives in another country and one lives who knows where at the time we bought the ticket. So I bought two. I'm like, it's bowling for soup and they're playing it like a, you know, crappy club in Boston. It's going to be fine. And a week after they went on sale, it sold out. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how did this sell out? It's bowling for soup in Boston. Nobody knows this band. Well, turns out they do. And so I had to like find tickets on the aftermarket. Like, it was like, yeah. this is crazy. Yeah. But but that's rare. Like it, it most of the time, the GA stuff, it's just you just go, you know, there, there is one thing I do want to tell for for anybody out there that is doing any sort of uh, their own productions or their own ticket events, especially like you, Paul. I know you've you've I think we've talked about this before. There is some major value in the in the VIP options, right? You think about your favorite band that you go to see if, if they're like, hey, I know tickets are 20 bucks, but what if you pay 50 and you get these cool things? Uh, I do that. I pay for that when I go to see my favorite bands that there are people that love you. If you're considering a ticketed event or you're doing a ticket event, there are people that love you and they will pay, they will pay whatever. I mean, they well, will- it's not even just that it's whatever. The deal is this. And remember, they will pay 50 bucks for their booze through the night. You are yes. worth every bit as much as you, your yes. entertainment, your, you know, what you're giving to their heart and soul is, and they know that, right? You can't be ashamed to ask for it. Right. Well, and, and, and offer that, offer that special package where the front of the stage is a, is a private right. area with a right. private bathroom and a private bartender. People love that. You get in early and you get to do you get to hear our sound check and we'll play a couple songs just to yep. you and you'll have this pre post show hangout thing. Don't, don't be afraid to, to do that. And so to smart. Add that. Even yeah, if, I agree. even if it sounds people. egotistical to you, right? Like, but your you fans, fans are the into it. You ask for a fan, treat them like a fan, right? Like, treat them like a fan. fan. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And so it's, it's nonstop. Just think, think of things that, that add more, you know, that those VIP tickets might cover your, your costs for the night. And then GA is just like, cool. We're, that's, we're that's your profits. Yeah. Yeah. So Mike, I've, I've super loved this conversation. You're just a wicked smart guy and a super nice guy. My last question for you tonight. So you actually dropped the seed. We're not going to be able to do this forever. Are you guys actually, do you talk about the end of the road ever? Are, I mean, are you a musician who like, you'll be a musician for life. And if, if, Ooh. if the cover band thing, you know, hits the wall sometime, I'll be drumming somewhere. Or are you guys, nope, this, I live my dream. I built something I love when it's time to put it in mothballs. I'll be good. Oh, that's a messed up question because if you would ask me two years ago, I'm I'm I'll be 42 this upcoming. I'm 41 and a half. I had my first child. We were not going to have kids. We're like, oh, we don't need kids. We're going to travel the world, live on a yacht. Had a kid, and now it's completely changed my life. This beautiful little girl, and now things are different. Right now, I'm like, you know, if this ends, I did it. Right, I, I have that mentality of 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 I I went through it and. To tell you the truth, the daunting thing is thinking about starting over of all the work that we have put into this and all the the things we have done to go back. I feel you. Just like, hey, you yeah. you'd be the same way as me. Like we've done so much that if this does end, I I think I'm good at least for a while. You know, at least to be like, dude, I'm, I'm you'll do go you'll do it again. I, and I know I will. It and doesn't. And will. it doesn't. Two things. You'll do it again. It does it because you, you're this is the the entrepreneur's curse, right? Like yes. and and combine that with the musician's curse, right? Like it's it's a double whammy. You'll do it again. It doesn't have to be as big as this one is, but it probably will be right. That's 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 one. That's the musician know. side of it. And then the entrepreneur side is your second million is way easier to make than your first million. <laughs> I don't mean to say that you made Come a million on, bucks. Man. I don't know how much you've made, but like yeah. it. Once you know how to do it, and it's not even that you know how to do it, it's you know what it feels like to have done it. It's so much easier to do it again. And I had a breakdown during COVID uh, where I was like, I'm not ready to give this up. Like it went away and I, it, it was pulled out from out of us. Yeah, Same I brother. I was like, I'm taking this for granted. We, we had our ready. breakdown in public here yeah. on the show. Yeah. yeah. I, I had many a night with my wife going, babe, if I learned anything, I learned that I'm not ready. I'm, I'm not ready to give this up. But now I look at our schedule for next year. We're 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 like 80 percent booked for 2024. So I'm I know that if we do call it quits, I've got some time to like think it out. But also when I when I couldn't play music, guess what? I go, oh, this is great. A little relaxation. Started a podcast. You know, like yeah. I needed something creative to do, do in my life. I had to move forward with it. So. I will tell you that one thing you know about having children when you're a musician. 
that's a whole conversation, right? When they're young, middle schooler, when they're high, but I'm going to tell you something, man, they grow up and they graduate <laughs> and they go out <laughs> in the world and your guitar is still, your drum kit is still waiting for you. All right. Dude, listen, my daughter is a year and a half and she holds, I have not taught her anything. She holds a drumstick properly. The other day she started double stroking it on the floor. Oh. And I, was like, I was like, Oh, is this the greatest thing that's ever happened to me? Like, I, awesome, I, I, I'm, like I, I'm not going to force this on you, but if you want to play drums, I am so into this, you know, like that kind of thing. So, yeah, let yeah. it be her idea. Tr I'm not trust me anything. on that. Right. I'm not saying anything, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, it, it, like I, I said, we we're going to have you on again. You and I had been texting about gear and like nerding out on some gear gab stuff. Obviously we didn't even get, we didn't even scratch the surface of that here. And at this point, I don't want to, I, I mean, I do want to, but I want to do it. I want to have you back and do that. Right. Like that, that's because I think that'll be really fun. But before we go, tell people about the other thing that you do when you're in front of a microphone this confused breakfast podcast that you do yeah like i said that was a uh, music went away and i'm a creative guy i needed something i had i was i was the guy in covid that in like from march to may to june was like actually pretty great i was like this is great this yeah. is kind of fun. A about july august i lost it I, I i fell off a cliff of just depression and i was like i it's because i need to start something creative so i i thought about something the podcast i had had a a music podcast that was related to Iowa that went away. And I said, I want something more global. So I got together with two friends and we started talking about classic movies, eighties, nineties, two thousands movies. Just like, let's just get together and talk about how all anybody was doing was watching well, movies. Yep. Yes. The, you saw what did, what did you remember as a kid? What do you remember now? Let's dissect it with a modern eye. And, and we, we did it for, we started October, 2020. It was fine. We had a couple crazy moments where uh, some major podcasts uh, comedians found it on TikTok and they started talking about it. And at one point we hit the number one uh, movie podcast in the world at one point. And it's, it's been a, it's been a wild ride of just like, man, taking the, again, taking that DIY spirit. This, this is the same band. story the folks same thing. It's just going, <laughs> Oh, well, what if we, but what if we push it further than anyone else has pushed it? And yep. what if we do that? It, I've, unfortunately that might be my, my uh, fatal flaw of just like caring too much about, about pushing things and just like, come on, well, what if we do this? And, and so here we are, it, give it a listen. It's called the confused breakfast. If you like movies and comedy, we, we have a really good time just, and, and we're all musicians. So we, a lot uh, of times we'll talk about the soundtrack of the movie or, or God forbid it's a movie about musicians. We will rip them apart because there's sure. never, there is never a main PA when a band is playing in a movie. There's never a, PA. isn't that bizarre? <laughs> Why is this? One. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Well, you know why? Because it gets it it, it 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 cuts into camera sight lines. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So confused breakfast. Give that a listen. Ah, uh, cool. Where else can people find you, my friend? Yeah, pork tornadoes everywhere. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. If you want to know anything about what we do, YouTube's probably your best place to check it out. Okay. Type in pork tornadoes, millions of covers. You'll 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 have a good time with. And it. where do people find you specifically? Yeah, look me up. My name is Mike Schulte. You can get me at Mikey Schulte on Instagram. Mike Schulte on I'm in the group. I'm in Gig Gab. I love when you slide my DMs. If you want to ask me any question in the world, I will be brutally honest with you. And I love chatting music. So just slide on in. Let's have a convo. Amazing. Mike, thank you so much for thank hanging you, out with Mike. us. Thanks for doing this. What a blast. It's it's I've learned a ton here and I've learned that I want to do this again. So we'll we'll definitely have you back, my friend. Thanks, guys. Cool. Hey, um, as we wrap up here, are there three magic words that you might want to share with our audience, Mike? I think it's always be performing. Some good advice.